Previously on Digital Foundry. Without giving anything away and not talking at all about platform comparisons, uh, I think people are going to be surprised. That's, that's my takeaway. There are surprises here, right? Yes, I think we can agree on that. Hey everyone, so yes, uh, next generation consoles, we promised you surprises and here they come. PlayStation 5 backwards compatibility. It's not good news. It's great news. It's amazing <laughs> news. It's, it's much better than anything uh, that we were possibly imagining and we can imagine quite a lot. And joining me to discuss it, John Linneman. Hey Rich, yeah, I think uh, we've both been spending a lot of time playing some PS4 games in here and constantly surprised by how good this is. This is awesome. Yeah, it's amazing really because, um, again, this bizarre sort of, uh, I'd say it's like a lack of communication from Sony about what we were actually going to be getting. There has not been much discussion from Sony at all about the situation with backwards compatibility. Back in March with Mark Cerny's Road to PlayStation 5 presentation, there was this talk of how they're testing the top 100 games. But then there was this kind of clarification that this was for, I think, uh, running the games with enhanced aspects of the PlayStation 5, the faster CPU and the GPU. And then there's this kind of massive radio silence right up to the pre-order period. And then since then, still conflicting messages. So I think we need to get this right out in the open. Every game that we've tested, bar perhaps one, runs with the full power of the PlayStation 5, the full CPU clocks, the full GPU power, and just like Xbox Series X, the effects can be absolutely phenomenal, uh, transformative to the point where we're just sort of blown away. So what do you reckon about that, John? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the performance boosts in so many of these games, it's really transformative to the point where it almost feels like what would have been a remaster in the past. Like you look back at something like God of War 3, the remaster version on PS4, it kind of feels like you're getting that just about... Uh, just by playing some of these games that already exist on PS4. But I do think it's worth uh, pointing out that this is not the same as some games, like Days Gone, Ghost of Tsushima, they actually received enhancements separate from the normal BC mode. So they actually run at a full 60 frames per second, and we'll talk about those in a separate video. This is just about games that are designed for PS4, haven't been updated for PS5, and basically we're showcasing the results we got yeah i mean that's pretty amazing just off the bat the fact that you know sony first party games that were you know traditionally locked to 30 frames per second at tsushima days gone i don't think we can understate just how transformed they are running at 60 frames per second i mean this is a topic for another video but we can't not comment about it it's it's pretty amazing but yes, you're quite right. One thing though, caveats that we've got to talk about with backwards compatibility, similar to Xbox Series X, which is, which is this. Um, backwards compatibility cannot break a game that has a 30 FPS frame rate limit. So, uh, you know, one example here. In fact, let's show it. Uh, we've got here Rise of the Tomb Raider running in 4K mode on PS4 Pro. And uh, yes, it's the Geothermal Valley. And it's running pretty much at 30 frames per second. It caps out at 30 frames per second. There are some dips beneath. PlayStation 5 can clean up those performance drops under 30, but it will not take you above 30 unless you use the 1080p uh, high frame rate mode. So that is you know, a profound limitation to all of the backwards compatibility solutions here. There's nothing that can be done about that unless the developer goes back in and patches the code. But even so, there's still uh, much to talk about. But yeah, you know, we just need to keep that in mind. The one that a lot of people will be talking about will be Bloodborne, which uh, people have been crying out for a 60 frames per second patch for that. And uh, Lance McDonald uh, actually produced a patch for it. A very much unofficial, but it, it did kind of work. It was just held back by the lack of horsepower. It's clear that it would work perfectly here. If it were available, it would run the game in a locked 60, I am confident. Exactly, but the fact is that it's not available, so it's, you know, the game hasn't really changed. But that said, there are so many games, so many titles we download, thinking that we're going to be getting, uh, you know, a nice uptick in performance, and we're seeing so much more. So where should we begin? Well, let's go back to um, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Yeah, I think Rise of the Tomb Raider, since we already mentioned it, is a good one to talk about. 
uh, in that it also has that performance mode, which drops the resolution down to 1080p, but it targets 60 frames per second. It wasn't bad before, but it definitely couldn't come close to holding a locked 60 on the Pro. Uh, obviously, as you can see here, the PS5 has zero issues doing that. And I'm fairly certain that if you were to run the higher resolution 4K checkerboard mode with an unlocked frame rate, you'd be getting the same results as we're seeing here. It's just, this is the nature of backwards compatibility, but still, it's really nice. I also tested, uh, just worth mentioning, I did test Chatter of the Tomb Raider as well on the side. That's also locked 60. So Tomb Raider's looking good on here. Yep, and uh, a game that uh, you covered back in the day, Final Fantasy XV, the light mode, again, similar to Xbox Series X, has a 1080p performance mode. It's really, I'd say, an unsatisfactory experience. Frame rates can be anything from, you know, the low 30s, mid 30s, all the way up to 60. But again, as you're seeing here, PlayStation 5, just as on Xbox Series X, just lock 60 from start to finish. Super smooth. It looks excellent in motion. And again, I, if only they could unlock the frame rate for the higher resolution modes now, uh, it would, yeah, I think we'd have 60 in the high res mode easily. Yeah, we were talking earlier about games that um, may not be able to hit their 30 frames per second target. Another classic example here that we're going to see cleaned up. Again, the classic Just Cause 3, which uh, was severely, severely CPU limited, basically whenever any kind of uh, huge explosions kicking off. And yeah, we saw anything below 20 frames per second on the base PlayStation 4. You only got a marginal uptick in performance on the Pro. Not really worth bothering with, but here again, the power of the Zen 2 CPU cluster in PlayStation 5. I just put this game really through its paces. I didn't see any drops beneath the target 30 frames per second. And again, I just couldn't see any reason why this game couldn't run at 60 if the uh, if the frame rate cap was, was removed there. On top of that, you know, uh, the PS4 version, I think, runs at 1080p. So... It is a little bit sharper than the Xbox One version, which would have been limited to 900p on Series X. So it could still be sharper, but it is what it is. But I think uh, thinking of jungle-like environments, the, ne <laughs> the next one is one that I think we all wanted to test. Uh, I'd seen this before in the past on Series X. Now we've seen it on PS5. It's Crisis, Crisis Remastered. Uh, it has a performance mode. It was terrible on the actual PS4 Pro and Xbox One X. I much preferred the more stable modes. Uh, but here, it's so nice they included it because it's perfect. I mean, that's really all I can say about this. In terms of performance, it's simply perfect. Yeah, it locks at 60 frames per second. And we've used our traditional stress test area here, the village. And you can see on the Pro, we're so CPU limited there that there are areas where we dip beneath 30 frames per second and uh, the whole thing just runs at 60 on PlayStation 5. Well, th there is the thing, though. Uh, there is a caveat. I said perfect, and that's not entirely true because there's, there's actually a couple issues here. Uh, there's still this checkpoint stutter, which seems to occur on every version of the game. So every time you hit a checkpoint, the game just sort of seizes up for a moment. That's annoying for sure. The game will have to be updated to fix that if it's possible at all. Then the other thing, at least in my case... Uh, I noticed when using the, the aim down sights feature on the game, the the depth of field blur was slightly broken, where it was like the upper left portion of the screen wasn't receiving depth of field while the bottom right kind of corner and edges were. So it looked weird. And I also spotted a few random like red rectangles, but I'd seen that before when I first covered the game on occasion. So I think it was like a continuation of that glitch. But still, aside from that, it's it's very stable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is impressive stuff, but you're right that the checkpoint stutter it is quite obnoxious. But the actual gameplay, once you're in the thick of it, just plays out beautifully. And again, you know, I can only wish that uh, the frame rate uh, limit was removed on the other modes because I suspect that the PlayStation 5 would ace it. Fingers crossed that Crytek will be producing a patch for this one because I'd love to see it. Yeah. We're going to pivot now to another traditional Digital Foundry benchmark test, which is Hitman, the original on PlayStation 4 Pro here, 1440p resolution. Uh, but the Paris stage here, it runs with, well, traditionally we've kind of suspected it was a CPU limitation. Our tests on Xbox Series X suggests there may well be uh, some GPU issues as well. 
But regardless, you're seeing the footage playing out here. It's anything from, you know, the low to mid 30s upwards on PlayStation 4 Pro. And again, <laughs> PlayStation 5 <laughs> locked 60 frames per second. It just keeps happening over and over again. And I love it. You just load up these games. Like, I wonder how it's going to run. Lock 60. I mean, it's not the most exciting in terms of talking about the the play-by-play -play here, but it's awesome. Like, it's great to see this. I guess the only thing here is that uh, when you tested this on Series X, I think the Xbox version supports native 4K, and that did show some dips, whereas on PS4 Pro, it was capped at 1440p in the high end. To be fair, though, I, I would rather take a lock 60 with a lower resolution over a higher resolution with some dips, but I was hoping we could have done a like-for-like -like comparison here with this game, and it's proving more difficult than expected, because there was a lot of variation in resolution between 1X and Pro. Yeah, it's very rare that you actually find a game that runs with an unlocked frame rate on both systems at the same resolution. And uh, certainly on the Xbox side, while we were doing our tests, we only had a set amount of games that we could actually test. They're all unlocked now, but uh, yeah, back in the day, that was the limit there. But uh, going back to Hitman for a minute there, John, I think it's worth pointing out that actually the 4K60 mode that we've got here actually runs mostly at 4K60. There are only occasional dips, certainly in the Paris section here. And of course, Hitman allows you to choose between a 2160p mode and 1440p. So you can match PS4 Pro slash PS5 here and obviously works just the same, locked 60 frames per second. But regardless, uh, we'll talk about this uh, in a bit because there is a, uh, a fundamental difference between Series X and um, PlayStation 5, which is that, you know, PlayStation 5 can only tap into the PS4 and the PS4 Pro modes. So, you know, a game that ran at 4K on Xbox One X will run at 4K on Series X, whereas on PlayStation 5, it can only operate at the same resolution as the Pro version. So yeah, Hitman is a classic case in point here, where it actually runs at 4K on the Series X, and it runs at 1440p. So yeah, this is very definitely still mostly a test biased towards CPU analysis, and, you know, as expected, PlayStation 5 aces it. It's just just fantastic stuff. And another game we we had to test. Okay, okay, Richard, we, we got to talk about this next one. This was actually the first game that I tested because people love to joke on it, but I, I like Knack. I actually think it's a fun game, especially the sequel. And it's also a game where, uh, famously, it's never quite run properly. They opted to leave the frame rate uncapped, and that always drove me crazy. Uh, the PS4 Pro got a patch, and in the 1080p mode, it actually got reasonably close. But there was a high-res mode, 1728p, which was just, it was not smooth at all on the PS4 Pro. But thankfully, now that we've reached seven years later, the new console's out, we can play it in this high-resolution mode, and for the first time, it's locked 60 frames per second in NAC. You must be in heaven, John. This is great. Like, I'm seriously like, okay... I'm going to play this for real because like uh, I think it's a fun little game and yeah seeing this run in high res at a lock 60 like this uh wow <laughs> it's it's funny because it's it's just it's one of those games that's kind of like occupied a space in my head for some reason maybe it shouldn't have but it has uh but here it is and I'm really happy with the results I love it too, uh, perhaps for a very different reason, uh, which is that um, if you consider the teraflop differential between PlayStation 5 and PS4 Pro, uh, 10.3 versus 4.2 thereabouts, you've basically got a 2.45x multiplier in GPU performance, moving from one generation to the next. And Mac, funnily enough, actually <laughs> is the game that shows that better than any other title because in the high resolution mode 1728p you can actually drop beneath 30 frames per second um, i think the lowest i actually saw it comes up here in in the uh the frame rate test is about 27 but um i think elsewhere i've actually seen it drop as low as 24 on the pro but again this is a recurring theme. It just does not shift from 60 frames per second on PlayStation 5. It's just flawless. It's brilliant. It really is. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a game changer for this. And uh, this also applies to the much smoother but still not perfect Knack 2. So uh, you can play Knack at a full 60 FPS. It's great. 
one of the other games I tested early on because so you tested this on the Series X originally. It's The Evil Within Two. I'm a big fan of this game. Like I really love this game. And on both consoles, you know, the the default was targeting 30 frames per second, but they did add in this sort of unlocked frame rate mode. And the Xbox Series X running in higher resolution than Pro, it wasn't enough to actually lock it to 60. I mean, it was better, a lot better, but it just couldn't get there. So I was really thrilled to see when I loaded this up, I played through the first hour or so into the city, ran around there. It's basically flawless. I mean, it's really stable 60 frames per second. Uh, I still think the game looks great. It's got some really cool effects at work and just like neat moments that kind of mess with your like mind, I guess, you know, that's the whole point. Uh, but yeah, it just blazes through no problem at all. It loads faster. It runs like a dream. It's just, it's, it's great. Like this is, this is a fantastic way to play the game now. Yeah. Again, we're seeing a huge uh, multiplier to GPU performance here. It is, you know, two times for, for quite a lot of the duration, sometimes even higher than that, because uh, I did note some spots where it will occasionally very fleetingly drop beneath 30 frames per second on PS4 Pro. This does not happen on the PlayStation 5 and it's, uh, it's glorious. But again, you know, it is a low resolution. So there's kind of like two factors here. The resolution is lower than Series X and the GPU multiplier, gen on gen, is higher. So these two factors combine to give us this, this, this lot 60. This is really interesting. And it's weird because the One X being what it was has actually caused some issues for some of those games running on Series X because the multiplier is lower. Whereas the PS5 is a larger jump over what PS4 Pro was and we're just seeing the benefits left and right here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's remarkable. Yeah, and speaking of remarkable, <laughs> Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Now, this was a game that I tested on Xbox Series X, and I was really impressed with it because you did see a transformative boost to performance. 1800p, 60 frames per second for a fair amount of the, of the benchmark sequence, but when we got into gameplay, 50 to 60 was the actual readout that you'd get for the actual experience of, of playing it. And that's the thing is your tests, uh, I mean, you haven't really had a chance to play this game, so they were all fairly early in non-demanding areas. I loaded up some other areas on the PS5, and including the intro as well, and it's just perfect. I mean, that's, what, that's the point here. And this is a perfect example of checkerboard rendering 1800p versus native 1800p. The visual difference between them is so minuscule, uh, but the performance boost is much more significant here. And as a result, like e I played this really on my PC because uh, I was really having a hard time getting, I, I couldn't adjust to the unlocked frame rate on the consoles for this game. And even on my PC at the time, I haven't tested it lately, I was still getting weird little stutters and hitches here and there. Uh, none of that is a problem on PS5. It looks super clean, full HDR, just, just rock solid performance all around. It's so good that I'm actually thinking I would like them to re-release a pre-patched version of this game on a disc because I would buy that in a second. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is remarkable. I, I would say that this is one of the more successful checkerboarding implementations. I mean, there are a lot of good ones out there, but this one, it's really difficult to tell the difference between uh, the PlayStation 4 Pro output and the Xbox One X output. And that pays off in spades on PlayStation 5. It's just a, a really phenomenal turnout here. And I think we're going to keep the focus on From Software games for now, because let's take a look at Dark Souls 3, which again had a really unsatisfactory PlayStation 4 Pro patch, which all it really did was unlock the frame rate, really. Nothing more. Which, weirdly enough, if we had had the same patch for Bloodborne, we'd be in a much better position with that game as well. I mean, you did the capture here for, for Dark Souls 3 running on PlayStation 5. Again, it doesn't budge. It's 60 frames per second throughout. But, you know, you're a fan of these games. What does this actually mean for the experience? So, again, I actually finished this game on the PC just because I wanted the smooth 60 frames per second. I didn't really even have a save handy for this. But these games just feel better at a stable frame rate. Uh, I've felt this way ever since... The series came to the PC. A stable 30 is acceptable enough, but they never even really got there because of the frame pacing issues on consoles. Having both this and Sekiro running at a locked 60 frames per second, and I mean locked 60 frames per second, it makes them like 
genuinely great versions to play now. And yes, this one is limited to 1080p, which is unfortunate, but it still looks good enough, I think. And just having it at this frame rate, it's something we've not had before with these. Even Dark Souls 2, when it received the enhanced version for PS4 and Xbox One, maybe the Pro and the One X fixed it, but on those original base machines, they were not 100% locked 60. So this is one of the first times I think we've ever had this, where you can actually go back to one of these classic from software games, play them all the way through. Uh, presumably, I haven't actually played all the way through them on the new hardware, but I don't see any reason to think it won't be completely locked. Yeah, I mean, we are looking at such a huge multiplier in both CPU and GPU performance compared to the base machine, let alone the Pro. It's just inconceivable that it will have issues. But with that said, I think we do need to address a couple of issues that we did come across. I think from my perspective, there is the sense that um, the testing regime behind Back Compat isn't quite as robust as Microsoft's. And the fact that we haven't tested anything like the thousands of games that are available, but we are finding small issues, suggests that users might come across some issues uh, on their own library of titles. I guess the the place to start is is actually people may have seen recently there was some news about some Ubisoft games that weren't supported. Uh, we discovered that they are in fact supported in that they do install and run, but there's a warning message that pops up when you try to play it. And this happens with a surprising number of games like uh, Doom Eternal's on this list. You start the game, it pops up this little message saying that you may have an issue playing. Now, the thing is, is I haven't actually encountered any problems with these games. They actually seem to run fine. So I'm really not yet certain what these warnings entail and what kind of issues we were going to run into. Uh, I mean, Sony has been prudent about this in the past, like on PlayStation 2. PS1 games on PS2 that had issues. Most of those issues are very, very small or just little tiny visual glitches here and there. Not a huge deal, but the games mostly still worked. But here, I'm not really sure what's going on and, and what we should be looking for and whether it'll actually create... I mean, it could be a problem that crops up way late in the game. It may just be some weird, obscure thing. It's really hard to know right now. Something which we did discover, I mean, obviously, Assassin's Creed Unity. We had to go back and test that disc version with the unlocked frame rate. It ran gloriously on Xbox Series X. But looking at the footage here, Something kind of curious is happening. It is not locked 60 on PlayStation 5. Even though, you know, GPU power, we're talking 10.3 teraflops versus 1.84 teraflops. It's a huge increase in GPU power. The CPU, we've already established that it's miles better than Jaguar. And yet we can't lock to 60 frames per second here when we could on Xbox Series X. So, yeah, I couldn't quite believe that when you told me about it. You sent over the footage that we're looking at here, and I do have a theory. I suspect that the CPU clocks are actually fully enabled. You're getting the full CPU performance because, you know, when you're in the busy outdoor cities, we spend a lot of the time at 60 frames per second, just like on Xbox Series X. However, it seems to me that when there's a lot of alpha effects on screen and when there's like uh, close-ups in cutscenes... Yeah, the bokeh depth of field is very heavy in this game, notoriously so. Yeah, we actually see a drop in performance that you don't see on Series X. Now, I know that uh, game developers, they have to test their PS4 games on PS5 and they've got a little option on the disc authoring tool that says, right, you've got to run the GPU at PlayStation 4 standard clocks. It's a little tick box. And um, I suspect that might be what's happening here. Maybe there's a compatibility issue that means they need to run Assassin's Creed Unity at PS4 base clocks. And that wouldn't really be a problem on the actual patched version of the game because, you know, that's locked to 30 frames per second. But here with uh, the unpatched version, the unlocked version seems to be uh, having some issues. And the fact that other games like Syndicate and other Assassin's Creed tangential titles from Ubisoft were on the uh, compatibility issue list makes me think that there's something with this engine that sort of pushed them to enable that maybe. Some sort of compatibility issue we're not seeing. And like you said, because when the game is fully patched, it's not unlocked. I'm sure if it was being tested by Ubisoft or whoever, uh, they would be testing that version, not this unlocked patched version. 
So this is one of those weird special cases, and I think you're probably right about this GPU thing. And it's also worth noting um, a couple other little details. You don't get uh, the automatic 16X an anisotropic filtering that you see on the Series X. So that's a, that's a little bit of a miss, but not a huge deal overall, I found. And curiously, so this is really interesting, is uh, it all runs in HDR, but it's tone mapped. So at Series X actually does auto HDR, which is like a sort of a, a way to compute what the HDR signal would look like from an SDR source, and it's really doing some work on it. Whereas on the PS5, it's always outputting HDR if you're connected to an HDR display, and that applies to PS4 games. And what I found in that case is that the overall image is actually slightly boosted in brightness, like the whites are brighter, everything's a little brighter. And it actually looks good, but it's still like just like tone mapped. So it's a weird thing. Like I, I like it, but um, I wouldn't really say it's real HDR. And you can always disable HDR in the in the front end menus, right? Yeah, I don't. In this case, though, I actually think it looks better with it, so I wouldn't do that. But it is curious. Um, I guess the weird thing there is I found, you know, if you want to use black frame insertion at 60 hertz and you know that it dims the screen a little bit, running with HDR enable, it brightens the image just a bit, which makes that the impact to brightness from black frame insertion less noticeable. So there is kind of a weird side benefit there. So yeah, I want to talk about some other things related to backwards compatibility because this has come out of nowhere. So it's fascinating here because, you know, on the face of it, technically, I think Microsoft's backwards compatibility solution uh, has been better tested and is better implemented. But when you consider the PlayStation library here, what Sony is bringing to the party is pretty amazing. So, you know, to explain that from 2013 to 2016, base PlayStation 4 games, they typically ran at 1080p. And uh, a lot of the time, the Xbox One versions would run at 900p. So if you run those 900p games on Series X, they'll still be 900p, whereas, you know, PlayStation 5, you're getting the 1080p uh, experience. So I think that's, that's pretty amazing. So that's a feather in Sony's cap there. You know, the fact that you're getting, typically in the multi-platform scenario, the PlayStation 4 version was better, and it's better on PlayStation 5. Then there's the whole enhanced console thing, which I find fascinating because the resolution targets were lower typically than Xbox Series X. But thanks to the GPU multiplier that you're getting going from PlayStation 4 Pro to PlayStation 5, you're getting higher frame rates. So we could find the limits of GPU performance on Xbox Series X under back compat pretty easily but I'm not sure that we found it on PlayStation 5 running PS4 Pro games because, you know, certainly in the tests that we've got here, unlock frame rate games just run at 60 frames per second. <laughs> it's, it's a remarkable turn of events. Yeah, and not only that, I mean, you know, everything still runs great from disc. Uh, that's also important to note. I tested a lot of disc games. And one game, you know, it can even, like, solve issues in, like, we didn't actually, we mentioned The Evil Within 2 earlier, and I just want to quickly mention... The first game, if you recall, that's a game where when it shipped on PS4, it had serious issues. The resolution was weird. The frame rate was always under 30, closer to 20, sometimes in the teens. It was terrible. The PS5, you can pop that in your, your system. Don't download the patch and it just works. It's locked 30 FPS. It works correctly. Everything feels just as it should. It's it's a funny thing to see how these games can just, they, they just feel like they've been fixed somehow. Yeah, I mean, it's all good stuff. But yeah, obviously, there's more games that we want to test. There's more experiences we want to share. But, you know, that's the big surprise. That's the great news. The fact that, um, you know, there's what? Over uh, 100 million, 110 million PlayStation 4 owners out there. Oh, yeah. You know, we had this big unknown as to whether the library would translate across to PlayStation 5. And if it did, whether we would be seeing enhancements. The great news is that, you know, pretty much everything is there. It's just been great fun for us, you know, talking about uh, the latest games that we've installed on our PS5s and to see how they're transformed running on the new system. We didn't even mention uh, loading though, you know, like we don't need to go into the numbers here, but that's another thing, the loading benefits from running on PS5. Uh, so that's, you know, that's a whole different thing to consider. Faster loading, faster frame rates. It just feels like all these console games that never quite ran correctly are suddenly exactly what they should have been in the first place. Yeah, and that's just terrific. But I think we're going to leave it there. Much more to share, as I said. Uh, so, yeah, 
keep your eyes peeled. Uh, but that's all from me for now. So thanks for joining me on this one, John. Sure, it was fun. <laughs> and as always, uh, please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed the work. Ring the bell for instant notifications uh, whenever Digital Foundry posts new content. And for those that love what we do and want to support the team more directly, you can download a huge body of work stretching all the way back to 2016 with pristine video quality. And obviously we've got uh, stuff like Spider-Man Miles Morales available uh, for download too, which looks absolutely phenomenal. But that's all from us for now. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of this one, if indeed you did. And just generally thanks for watching and supporting Digital Foundry. Yeah.